Hey guys, a little bit different of a video today. Um, some of you might have seen some information in the news recently regarding PFAS that has infiltrated our gardening products. I almost scrolled past it thinking it was clickbait, but for some reason I went back and I read it and I was floored, kind of shocked. Although I don't think I should have been. I probably should have seen this coming actually. But I had to say something because I will always advocate for the backyard gardener. I've stayed quiet about many things that have come down the pike because they might be too political for this channel, but when it involves the health and the lives of my fellow gardeners, I have to bring your attention to it. Plus, I don't see this as political. I'm going to try to present this in a way that is not fear-based because while it's scary and downright sinister in my opinion, there are things which we can do about it that I'll cover later in the video. I have two fears in doing this video. One is that there'll be new gardeners who are going through all the initial failures and disappointments of gardening, and I don't want this to just be one more thing that makes them throw up their hands. Or someone brand new who just got the bug and sees this video and says, forget it, it's not worth it. But the concern for the safety of your garden and health has to take priority, so let's jump into it. By the way, it's not a coincidence that I'm wearing my Garden Defiantly t-shirt. I hope you have yours too. PFAS stands for per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These are no ordinary chemicals. They're a toxin manufactured since the 1940s. And these compounds are found in everything from nonstick cookware and stain resistant fabrics to firefighting foam. They've earned the nickname Forever Chemicals. That's probably what you've heard them as. And that's because they literally never break down. They accumulate in our environment and in our bodies. And here's the scary truth. While these dangerous chemicals have been flooding our consumer products, no one has done enough to warn us about the toxicity they're leaving behind in our gardens. Now, how are they getting into our gardens in the first place? Well, first, it depends where you live and where you shop. If you live near uh, industrial zones or outdated water treatment plants, your water is almost certainly contaminated with PFAS. The people at the top have failed us by allowing these toxic levels to persist in our municipal water supplies. Many compost producers cut corners using waste that's been contaminated with PFAS. That nutrient-rich pile we love might be laced with chemicals that are slowly poisoning our garden. Plastic mulch and garden accessories are sold as convenient, but many of these products are treated with PFAS to prolong their life at the expense of your soil's purity. The most shocking part to me is that some slow-release fertilizers contain hidden PFAS contaminants. It's outrageous that products meant to nurture our plants might instead be poisoning them. Now, I've done videos on why I don't use miracle Grow products, and I've talked about Monsanto and Big Ag, I'll link that video down below in the description if you want to watch it. But it's not just pesticides and miracle Grow that are problems. In fact, I would say that some natural fertilizers out there today make miracle Grow look good. And unfortunately, because of marketing, many gardeners who would never think of using miracle Grow in their garden are instead using something natural that could be much worse. Now, the article that I found was about some tests of certain fertilizers. So I'm going to put a list here on the screen um, of the ones that they tested. Now, there is a commonality between all of these. And remember, these are just ones they tested, not ones that they didn't test. But the commonality is that the, the base part of these fertilizers is um, sewage sludge, basically. They call it sludge biosolids, but it's basically what's left over after they've treated sewage. So the tests that I was reading about revealed that American gardeners can unwittingly bring PFAS contaminants home when they buy fertilizer that is made from these biosolids. Now, of the 33 PFAS compounds that they analyzed for in that list of products, one of the products, Cured Bloom, contained 24. Now, I've never heard of that product. Um, or used it, obviously, but if you've used that product or heard of it, let me know in the comments. Every single other product they tested contained from 14 to 20 detectable PFAS compounds. Additional tests showed they also contained two to eight times greater mass of precursor compounds and hundreds to thousands of times more unidentifiable synthetic fluorine compounds. 
You don't have to know what all that means to know that ain't great. So what is the fallout when PFAS invades your garden? The consequences, they aren't great either. PFAS can wreak havoc on your soil's delicate microbial balance, something we work really hard to, to attain. A healthy soil ecosystem is essential for nutrient cycling and robust plant growth. And PFAS disrupt this balance, leaving your garden barren and lifeless over time. Shockingly, some PFAS compounds can be absorbed by plants. That means that toxic chemicals could be ending up in the fruits and vegetables we eat, exposing us to long-term health risks. When all we're trying to do is know what's in our food by growing it ourselves. PFAS can interfere with soil structure and water retention, leading to stressed, underperforming plants. And when your soil can't hold water properly, your garden's entire ecosystem suffers. So ultimately, we could be pouring our heart, our sweat, and our resources into a garden that's slowly poisoning us and our loved ones. I mean, it's infuriating. It's, it's just wrong. Let's get into that further. PFAS exposure isn't just a minor inconvenience. Studies have linked these chemicals to liver damage, thyroid problems, and even immune system disruption. Much of the former research focuses on industrial or drinking water exposure, so at least filter the water that you ingest. But now that there is the potential for garden-grown food to become a hidden source of these toxins, I mean, that's just a nightmare. The bottom line, if we're unknowingly feeding PFAS into our bodies through contaminated produce, that is a huge betrayal of trust by manufacturers and regulators. We have to stop accepting these hidden dangers as normal and demand real action to protect our health. Now, I probably should put a, a on-screen disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional. For professional health concerns, consult a qualified expert. I'm just giving you what I've found in my research. So you can test for PFAS um, in your garden or in your drinking water. You just have to get a test, collect a sample, and then send it off to the lab. So if you live in an area or you've bought a product um, where this is something that you, you really should worry about, take the extra time to do this test. And yeah, it, it, it really sucks that you have to pay to find out if you've got something in your soil that never should have been there in the first place and that you didn't know that you were putting there. But that's where we are now. And don't stop at the soil. Test your irrigation water too. And while you're at it, the water you drink. Um, if you've got problems there, then you've got bigger issues upstream, literally. So what can you do about this toxic assault on basically our gardening freedom? Here's how you can fight back uh, against PFAS contamination in your garden. First of all, only purchase compost, fertilizers, and soil amendments from suppliers who provide transparent certified test results. Demand accountability. Don't settle for vague claims of eco-friendliness or natural, because that's what these products said. Stay away from any product that uses biosolids or sewage sludge. I use Neptune's Harvest and Espoma, both of which do not use biosolids. I trust them both. Definitely replace plastic mulches and synthetic materials with natural alternatives. Use organic, you know, fabric mulch, mulch from tree trimmings, mulch hay, straw. Um, it's time to stop supporting products that are poisoning our soil. Filter your drinking water, for sure, if you have a problem there. There's also filters that can go on the, the end of your garden hose, so you can water your garden and know that you're not putting anything crazy on there. I hate making videos like this, but it just makes me so mad when here we are, we're trying to do our best. We're trying to take care of our families, ourselves, by growing gardens. Whether you're doing gardening for, you know, growing food or your mental health, we've got to stay vigilant. I just, I hate that I have to make these type of videos, but ultimately, it's something we have to know about. It's something we need to know if we think we're doing a good thing and ultimately we're being sabotaged by these big companies out there who just want to make a profit. All right, I've said my piece. I've given you some helpful information, hopefully. Do what you need to do. Stay safe, stay happy, and continue to garden defiantly. We have to. I'll see you next time.